An important concept in entity relationship models are weak entity sets. In this example, the payment is a weak entity set. It is visualized similar to entity sets using a rectangle, but now we use a double line. So what makes payment a weak entity set? The crucial feature is that the payment does not have a key attribute attached to it. In particular, the payment number is not the key for the payment entity set. There can be many payments with the same payment number. So how do we identify payments then? The point is that every payment must be associated to precisely one loan. And the payment number identifies a payment uniquely in combination with the loan number of the associated loan. So the combination of the loan number of the associated loan and the payment number forms a key for the weak entity set payment. So in other words, this dashed underlined payment number is called a discriminator and this discriminator payment number is unique among all the payments of a certain loan. So a weak entity set is an entity set without a primary key. The existence of such weak entity set depends on the existence of an identifying entity set. And the weak entity set and the identifying entity set must be related by a one-to-many relationship set. This is called the identifying relationship set. And we depict it using a double line, like we do for the weak entity set. The main point is this cardinality. Every weak entity must be connected to precisely one of the identifying entities. The discriminator of the weak entity set is a partial key. It distinguishes the weak entities only in combination with the key of the identifying entity set. So the primary key of the weak entity set is obtained by combining the discriminator of the weak entity set with the key of the identifying entity set. So let's try whether you understand weak entities. So we want to model the following scenario. We want to model some online multiple choice quizzes. Each quiz shall be identified by a title. Each question within a quiz is numbered. Each possible answer to a question is referenced by a letter. For each question and answer, the associated text is stored in the database. Answers are classified into correct and incorrect ones. So for this scenario, we should develop an entity relationship model. And for each of the entity sets and the weak entity sets, we should determine what is the primary key. So first of all, we have a quiz. Every quiz has a title. The title uniquely identifies the quiz, so we can pick this as a primary key. Next, every quiz consists of questions. The questions have numbers. The number does not uniquely identify 
the question. Every quiz has questions 1, 2, 3, and so on. However, the number identifies the question in combination with the corresponding quiz. So in combination with the title of the corresponding quiz. So the question is a weak entity set. And we have an identifying relationship set. that connects the question with the quiz. So every question belongs to precisely one quiz, and every quiz consists of at least one question. The number identifies the question in combination with the title of the quiz, so the number is a discriminator for question. Next, every question also has an attribute text. Every question has a set of possible answers. The answers are referenced by letters. And the answers also have a text. And the answers are also classified into correct and incorrect ones. So we will do this by attaching a Boolean attribute correct. Now, again, the letter does not uniquely identify the answer. There's many questions that have all answers A, B, C, and so on. So the answer is also a weak entity set. It is identified uniquely only in combination with the question that the answer belongs to. So every answer belongs to precisely one question, and every question consists of at least one answer. Now, the letter identifies the answer in combination with the corresponding question, so the letter is a discriminator for answer. Okay, so now let's discuss this design. So one thing we could discuss is whether it's correct to have a question consist of one or more answers. You could say that the question should have at least two answers. This is of course fine to, to choose this as a design. I would argue that if we can have answers that are correct or not, then the question with a single answer might actually make sense. You might still need to answer whether this is correct or not. Um, you also might want to uh, change the design concerning the classification of the answers into correct and incorrect ones. Here we have just used an attribute that can be true or false, but you might want to choose a different design where you actually have two different entity sets for the correct and incorrect answers. Then I would say that the best design, actually, if you want to do this, if you want to distinguish the entity sets, then actually the best would be to use the is a relationship that we will see later in this course. Then we could have three entity sets. We could have a higher level entity set answer, and then we could have lower level entity sets, which derive, which are derived from answer, the correct answers and the incorrect ones. The advantage of having these three entity sets would be that we could attach the property letter to the higher level entity set. Finally, the question was to answer what are the keys for each of the entity sets or the weak entity sets. The key of the quiz is clear, right? The key is just the title. 
For the weak entity set question, the key consists of the discriminator of the question, this is the number, plus the key of the identifying entity set quiz. So it's a combination of number and title. where the title is the attribute from quiz. Now, the key of the answer consists of the discriminator of answer, the letter, plus the key of question. So it's the combination of letter and number and title.